Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back everyone. We've been looking at ways to work with a completed, organized set of data, and now we're going to take a look at some formulas and functions. In this module, we're going to focus on formulas, so let's jump right in. Here we are in our recipe book that we've been building, but of course, what we learn here can be applied to more typical looking data sets. So we're going to use our recipe book along with an extra tab we have down here, the U.S. Agricultural Trade tab. Now remember, we used this in a previous exercise. This data set is provided by the USDA, so you can access this and additional information, including the latest data on their website, which is linked here. Okay, so first, what's the difference between a formula and a function? Think of formulas as basic math, and think of functions as the big, fancy, amazing formulas but in nice little packages for us to use. So to get started with either one, you're going to type equals, and then you're going to add your formula or function. So we're going to use the U.S. Agriculture Trade tab for this first part, and let's look over here to the right where we have some blank space to work with. Pick a cell and type equals. As I click around, you can see that the cell is represented wherever I've clicked. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard, which is helpful. And I can also select a range, and that is automatically represented as well. You can also type out the cell if you know what it is. And notice as I type, it does start suggesting functions. So let's do a formula. Remember, a formula is like basic math. So I can select one cell and use basic math, such as add or subtract, and then select another cell and press enter. There you go. Basic math. I subtracted the imports from the exports and notice what I got was the exact same thing as what's in the trade balance column, which is probably what they used to get that data. Also, you can multiply or divide if you needed to, and you can also string multiple operations together, always pressing enter when you're done. So basic math. Okay. Now that we have our formulas entered, we can use this blue box at the bottom right corner of the cell to drag the formula down so that it applies the formula to each row. Okay, now how do you know what's in that cell? Let's look at the top left to see the cell value as I move around. You can also double click a cell and it will reveal the formula or the function and it highlights the cells in the formula with a different color. Notice how applying the formula worked for these additional rows. How awesome. Okay, everyone, now let's add an interest rate. Let's add our basic formula of multiplying this cell by the interest rate. Okay, that worked. Now let's drag this down to apply the formula to the additional rows. Let's verify that it worked. And what do you see? It didn't lock my interest rate cell, and instead it moved it down to the next row, and therefore all the other rows except for the first one are not calculated correctly. So we need to lock that interest rate cell. It's called making it an absolute in Google Sheets, and we do that with dollar signs. You can also use a keyboard shortcut, which is F4. So a dollar sign before a column locks the column. A dollar sign before the row number locks the row. So if I put a dollar sign in front of the column and in front of the row number, it will lock that exact cell. So those are your three options. Lock column, lock row, or lock both, which gives you a cell. So let's update our formula accordingly and press enter. Now reapply the formula to the rows below and let's verify there you go. It worked this time. It locked that cell where I have my interest rate. Okay, everyone, we're back in our recipe book. We've looked at basic formulas with numbers so far, but you can take this same concept and apply it to text. Many times our data is coming from a Google form, a survey, or imported from some sort of application or software program. 
you may have come across where first and last names are in separate columns, or maybe the address is broken down into multiple columns, and sometimes you might say, hey, I wish I could just add these together. Well, I'm here to show you that you can. Now, when using text, I want you to think and instead of plus. So let's filter our recipe book. So we're going to look at meals with a protein and I'm going to use my extra empty space over here to the right to play. I want to combine my course and my protein columns. So I'm going to click equals, select my protein, use and, and now select the course and press enter. Hmm. There isn't a space in between the two words. Okay. So we can add that. Let's double click and go back into edit mode. Use and at the end and put quotation marks around the word recipe. Notice how that was added. So let's use that same concept, but instead of using the word recipe, we're going to use a space inside quotation marks. So now it reads protein cell and space with quotation marks around it and course cell, press enter, and there we go. Just like number formulas, you can drag down to apply this formula to additional rows. So how cool of a trick is that? You just need to remember to use and instead of plus when working with text. And also remember if you are going to add any type of text, including spaces, put those in quotation marks. Here's another cool trick with that. Remember these checkboxes? I get to determine what the cell value is. So let me go into data validation for a second and I'm going to set these gluten-free checkboxes that are yes to GF. Now, back over to the right, I'm going to add at the beginning and also add an additional space. So now it reads gluten-free cell and space and protein cell and space and course cell. Press enter. Isn't that cool? Remember, there are many times you're going to use this, especially when you're importing data and you need to combine columns together. Okay, everyone, how was that? What do you think about formulas? Not so bad, right? If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.